Today, I am going to compare and contrast two seemingly similar email-based businesses. Uh, the first one is Groupon, and Groupon's value proposition is that it will save you money by giving you exclusive deals, and their customer segment is just about every consumer. Um, certainly, every consumer in the Western world is within their scopes. And the customer relationship is a daily email. Once they engage you, um, they're going to hit you up every day <laughs> until you tell them to stop. Um, and they find you kind of initially through either their site um, via SEO. Like every deal they run, every art, or every deal they run has its own page, an article, and a little bit of content. So that really helps the search. And then they also do paid user acquisition. And there's a little bit more, but we'll get back to that later. Um, and their revenue stream is they get a percentage of what you buy. A surprisingly large percentage, really. Um, their other kind of important factor in their business model is um, their partnership with small businesses. Um, and I mean, they aren't all small, but many of them are kind of local businesses and Groupon builds up uh, relationships with them, forces them into passing huge savings onto the customer and then Groupon takes a slice of that. So everyone benefits sort of. Um, the benefit to the small businesses, we can either think of them as a partner or we can think of them as a, a customer. It doesn't really matter. We can probably even think of them as both small business. Um, the channel for the small business is direct sales, and this is the heart of what Groupon does. It's incredibly aggressive about its sales, and it spends a lot of money there. So that'll become the core of its cost structure. Um, it's got sales, and it's got paid user acquisition. And these are specifically, whatever, these are like the salespeople. So this is the... Thing you're paying for that lets you do it. This is the way you're reaching them, and then your key activity is um, that your sales. They're a sales organization, not a technology company or a, a content company. Their resources: one, they have the email list of consumers, and then two, they've got their extremely um, powerful vendor relations. And I don't mean the vendors are powerful. I mean the Groupon has a lot of power over them, so they can force. Um, really high value deals for their consumers and that is sort of what gives them their hook and it's hard to get into this um, power position without already having a really good email list so that's why it's hard to come out of nowhere and compete with Groupon now um, so you can see basically the it seems like they're an email list but essentially they're a sales organization and they have this really important relationship with small businesses that they drive through heavy um, direct sales now we're going to compare that to um, other companies that work through a daily email as their customer relationship. Um, and these are just the, the email lists. There's a ton of them out there. And generally what they help you do is um, look cool by providing some sort of exclusive or rare knowledge. So they're going to tell you, this is a great new wine bar. Or, uh, like These clothes are terrific, or you've got to buy this or do this or watch this movie. Um, and again, it's exactly the same customer segment of all consumers. It might be a little bit more focused in on consumers who want to look trendy. They want to be known as doing something new. They want like they want that exclusivity. Um, the channels have a lot of similarities. So if we go back and look at Groupon, you can see we've got the site and SEO, um, which we still have here. You've got paid user acquisition and you've got direct sales. So paid user acquisition is still really important. Um, especially when you've got fewer than 20,000 users. Um, and then once you pass about 20,000 users, you're hoping to get word of mouth and, and viral to kick in. Um, and usually you'll just sort of fund it until you get to this point. The 20,000 users is thought of as a tipping point, and then beyond there you can start to make money yourself. So that brings you to the question of what are we sending them? <laughs> uh, and that ties into our key res or key activity, which is content creation. Every day we have to have a fresh daily email to send them, and we're not just telling them we can save them money, we're actually kind of creating novel content. 
um, and that's expensive. So we have to pay for all of our content creators. Um, fortunately, you know, or maybe unfortunately, whatever, we don't have the partnership with small businesses here. Our revenue just comes from advertising, affiliate, sponsorship. So we'll probably have to do a little bit of um, ad sales to get those, but it's not going to be kind of what we're doing every day. You know, the core of it is making fresh content and focusing on our, our consumers. And we end up making about $5 per subscriber per year off of um, these revenue streams. So that means when we're doing paid user acquisition, um, it depends a bit how long. Like if a user stays on the list for two years, we could spend up to $10 um, to get a user and keep them happy. And you'll see a lot of these companies, they'll raise um, VC money and basically just slam up their um, their users through paid acquisition, even if it's a loss in the short term, and then try to flip the company, which seems to work fairly well. The key resource, again, just like Groupon, it's your, um, your email list, your subscribers, um, but you don't really have the vendor relationships. You just have kind of cool content creators. You've got guys who really understand um, the scene, but anyone can copy that. Now, what I want to highlight here is the key activity. So... Groupon and daily email lists seem like they're very similar. I mean, each day, right, you receive a daily email. You think that's the product, so you imagine the company's working basically the same. And even the way they acquire, like they build up their email list is, is comparable. Um, but what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, how the companies would feel if you were inside them is totally different. They're worlds apart. Um, Groupon is a sales organization. You know, they're... If they have an extra hundred grand in the bank, they're going to use it to hire salespeople. That's how they scale. Whereas daily email lists are a content business, they have to scale a little bit more organically. You can do user acquisition to a point, but you know you, you can't just hire hundreds and hundreds of content creators and take over the world immediately like Groupon can. So you can imagine how different it would be to run one versus running the other. But they're both you know great types of businesses. While I'm here, I should say that this refers mostly to the first few years of Groupon's life. Um, they're now finding that they have so much demand from small businesses um, that they're kind of bringing technology. They're trying to take out sales as a choke point and build up technology to create a marketplace between the consumers and the businesses. Um, so that may or may not work, but it's definitely only possible because of these key resources that they built up over time. If they didn't have such a relationship, such a sorry, reputation with the vendors and so many uh, access to so many consumers, they'd never be able to pull that off. Um, and once they do it, if they do it successfully, then they'll sort of start to seem like the eBay or the Craigslist where people look at them and wonder, you know, their, <laughs> their product is so simple. Like, I can do that. How did, how did they get here? And they got there because of really aggressively executing on on this their first model